We're going to take a look at the Winchester Bonded PDX-1 40 Smith & Wesson, 165 grain jacketed hollow point. Also available in 180 grains. This is a 20 round box I picked up at a local retailer for about $24. This is a brand referring to the PDX-1 that I seem to be able to find at most of the big box sporting goods stores and a lot of my local gun shops as well. So I will say that Winchester seems to have flooded the market with the PDX-1 in 40 and the other calibers in which it is available. Those test shots a moment ago were from the 4-inch barrel Glock 23. I know that it says uh, 32 on the slide, 357 Sig, but with a quick barrel replacement, it becomes a 40 caliber handgun. And my five-shot average out of that 4-inch barrel was 1,119 feet per second, just slightly below the advertised by Winchester of 1,140 feet per second, getting a, l a little bit of recoil out of these compared to, say, 180 grain loads. I think that's going to be expected in the 40 Smith & Wesson. And we're going to give this a little bit of a barrier penetration test in just a moment. Nothing really serious. Four layers of denim over a block of the SimTest media. That is calibrated to ballistic gel specs. I actually tested this earlier, when I say earlier, back in July of 2010 with a Glock 22, a little bit longer barrel, and that was with wet pack and denim. So let's try it out today with our enhanced testing protocol. Good shot placement and no pass through. Gives new meaning to the name Fuzzy Naval. As we get started, I'll let you know that you will definitely hear and possibly see some bugs fly in front of the camera. They're going after these umbrellas on the studio lights as I'm in the garage. Sounds like somebody's hitting ping pong balls. Anyway, this is a cutaway of the stretch cavity. We're going to focus on this left side. This is where I found the bullet. Expansion begins about a half inch in. This cavity runs for approximately five inches, going out to about right here. At the widest point, it is one inch, and then approximately half inch in depth. Looks like we have some cutting, so we definitely had some expansion just based on that. As always, the bullet will settle down and start flying. It is obviously turning as it progresses through here, and there's our mark. Now, I have not fully excavated the bullet, but it's coming in close to 16 inches. I'll give you an approximate measurement in just a second. Let's focus in. And that is the nose of it. I'm not going to dig around with it too much here, but just so you can see. Wow, there it is. How about that? Let me get this washed up. Definitely expanded violently at that. Let me get this cleaned up, get the exact measurement where that leading edge was, and some weight and diameter. There's the high mark on expansion, 0.730. The average is 0.670. I risked out the media, but still coming in just a little bit heavy at 166.4 grains. The bugs won that round, but there will be other nights, and we will deal with it appropriately. So I'm in the kitchen, and we'll try to keep the echo to a minimum. Ballistic gel, by the way, is on the stove, cooking for the next test. So that's how I recycle it. Okay, a lot of good things about this. First off, the ammo for me is easy to locate. The big box stores, and you know who they are, they typically have this available. Uh, and my smaller retailers, independent stores in this area, have it as well, and hopefully that's the case for you. Expansion on this, you look at that bullet and say, wow, that's, you know, I just don't know about that. It's not symmetrical. Hey, don't hold that against it. That's what bullets are probably going to look like, as we zoom in a little closer, in the real world. When you have bone and other types of things going on and obstacles and barriers, that's what's going to happen. I don't have a problem with that. Average expansion was really good considering the points uh, were all over the place on that measurement. Penetration I thought was outstanding, 16 inches. Uh, for me, that's not too little, that's not too much. Some people might feel that's over-penetrating and that's just your personal preference. The only thing that some folks might have uh, an issue with is recoil, but if you're carrying a 40, you should expect that and that you're gonna have a little bit more on the 165s, I would think, versus the 180s. All in all, thought it was a good test. Thanks for watching.